Hello there, folks. This is your host of Lit Literature, JP, the Demon, and uh, this is a really fun episode. I'm really happy about it. It's episode 13, the last episode of Words of Radiance, and uh, the last practice episode. I'm happy about the quality. We're getting really close, and we have some good stuff coming towards you in the future. So super pumped for Oathbringer episodes coming forward for you. Um, in between, I think we're going to put out, uh, most likely we're going to put out a uh, Game of Thrones, History of Game of Thrones episode, which is a lot of fun, uh, just to give me time to edit. And uh, I do apologize for getting this one out a little later. Uh, it's been extremely busy. So either way, um, we've made a lot of progress. I hope you enjoy. And without further ado, the last discussion on Words of Radiance. And we are live. Dross, are you live? I am live, sir. Live from sunny Arizona. All right, folks, we are back. Uh, thanks for joining us again for episode, what I think now is 13, Lit Literature, the last kind of uh, developmental episode that we're going to record before we move on to the big book three book of the three. Stormlight Archive. So this is the last um, episode or, or two, or yeah. two, yeah, depending on the timing, um, of... Um, the Way of King, or excuse me, not The Way of Kings, geez, that's book one. Words of Radiance. <laughs> Words of Radiance. By Brandon Sanderson. Again, you're here with the shout outs. Just as a quick note, you can find us on Facebook under um, Lit Literature. And also, you could get some information on Lit Literature and our crew, the shout outs, at likeit.net. L Y K E T. Dot net. Uh, so feel free to jump over there to see some of our other projects. Although right now we're primarily focused on lit literature as it's our introductory program. So uh, today we have a smaller crew. We do have the hitman back from his overseas travels. We have <laughs> anything to say, Ben? Not right now. He just picked, right he picked up some exotic uh, flu, it seems, yeah. in, during his last assassination. It was, it was his cover. It was his cover. Yeah. Uh, again, this is your host, uh, JP, a.k.a. The Demon. Across the table, we've got Brett, the director. Anything you want to say, Brett? Brett, the director. BrettWilliamsFilm.com. Check it out. And from the Shattered Plains, the captain is calling in. Crawling out of the mouth of a chasm fiend, Captain <laughs> Andrew. Reporting for duty, sir. All right. Always barely surviving. So, uh, that's your crew for today. We may get some visitors uh, throughout the podcast. We'll see how that goes. Um, they're tied up, and uh, that's about it. So let's, let's just jump into it. So yeah. um, first thing, we kind of finished last episode talking about chap or, uh, part four, and basically Kaladin and Shallan make it out of the chasm, and then Kaladin's injured, he can't heal himself without Stormlight, and Shallan is asked, due to her map-making abilities, to accompany Dalinar on the final attack of the Parshendi. Yes. That's its framework. I think we got to talk probably first about, uh, let's see. I don't know. Where do you guys want to start? You want to start with Kaladin? I think we have to talk a little bit about the fact that Shallan is going to fall in love with Kaladin. Oof. Although we talked about that last time, didn't we? We did. <laughs> we uh, did. We've got a Brett bet uh, going, going on that. <laughs> we have a Brett bet oh. tracking this. Uh, yeah. But well, now that we have the hitman here, we could uh, see Get his official his answer. Are. So the the... There's kind of three options. You could bet that Shallan stays with Edelman, realizes that she needs to go for the dark-eyed captain. Oh, you thought that? Or, well, <laughs> we'll get there. Or uh, other, which means neither or someone else. Yeah, and the to to refine the terms of the bet, uh, it was who do you think she's going to end up with? Specifically, and, uh, was the bet not necessarily have the strongest feelings for, but actually right. end up with? Mm -hmm. Ooh, we all placed our bets. Yeah. So you're. Uh, I, I just wanted by text last time when I said he's gonna, she's gonna end up with a Kaladin. Kaladin, Kaladin. Even though wow. I like the <laughs> relationship between her and Adeline better. Yeah. There's not so much baggage and yeah. like hatred that Kaladin has. <laughs> yeah, but I think he's gonna. Start overcoming some of that, hopefully, in the third book, and become more likable. 
Yeah. All right. So that and uh, Adeline seems like he might be doing the opposite. <laughs> yeah. Eventually, but we'll get to that. <laughs> Adeline might be picking up some baggage. Yeah. Here. We'll, we'll right. get to that. All right. So we've got Kaladin. He thinks that Syl may or may not be dead. He's worried about her. He can't heal his leg, so he's walking around like a gimp. Yeah. Um, and he's in super depression because he realizes that when Dalinar goes out on this mission, that the people left in charge of the king's protection happen to be Moash and team, <laughs> which is the worst thing for the king. And so Kaladin's obviously very conflicted. Yeah, and at this point, right. we, we already, uh, by the part five, we already kind of know that Kaladin has said that he's okay with the plan, right? Yeah, he, mm-hmm. he says that, yeah. But he's also kind of seems like in the chasm, maybe? I don't remember exactly when it happens, but has he started kind of questioning that yet? Well, I think I think deep down he's been questioning it, right. but mm-hmm. he's really struggling. And I think he struggles even more when the king actually reaches out to him. Right, he's right, to exactly. Him. That's Go right. ahead, Captain. Yeah, at one point, the Elokar actually visits um, Kaladin in his barracks, and... Uh, is in a ve- the king is in a very bad mood. Um, Elakar is like, why don't people like me? You know, you're a hero, Kaladin. Like, tr- teach me how to be a hero. Like, tell me, teach me how to lead. Everything I do is wrong. Yeah. And he's kind of really going on this rant. And and Kaladin tells him, you know, gives him an honest answer. Elakar asks him, what do you think of me? And he says, you know, I don't think you're a very good king. I think you should step down. And Elokar really does kind of take it a lot better than, you know, we've seen his character be in the past. Um, Elokar really has come full circle and he really knows deep down like he's not a very good king. He's not doing a good job, but he's willing to learn and he's willing to try, which kind of makes all the difference for Kaladin, because it's at this point in the book that um, Kaladin draws a parallel between Tien and the king because Tien wasn't a soldier he was trying and uh, his fellow officers just kind of removed him because he was useless that's exactly what Moash is trying to do with the king they're trying to remove him because he's useless so Kaladin sees that there's very very little difference between those scenarios and it makes him sick he's like you know what if I truly wanted to protect Tien back in the day and failed, then I really need to step up and protect this king because he's trying, and it's kind of the right thing to do for him. Yeah, I also think it's really cool, going off of what you just said, how uh, through Kaladin's character we keep seeing the importance of perspective and how he keeps coming up against his own beliefs like mm-hmm. all the time. Like at first it's like oh they just hate bridgeman you know they're just they just want to see us die and then it's like oh there's a strategic reason you may not agree with that strategy but it's not just because you want to see bridgeman die it's because bridgeman are less important to them than the soldiers the trained soldiers and now we see another mm-hmm. time where like once he gets more information and more perspective and i i like that at least kaladin is unlike some people at least kaladin even though he has specific prejudice at least when he's re- uh, presented with new information, he kind of starts seeing the other perspective, which I really like about he, him. It seems like he's getting more right. and more open-minded. And I think his uh, trip in the chasms with Shaman really helped with that. Yeah. Because he realized mm-hmm. that just because your light eyes are not all hunky-dory, it may right. be totally different. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone has your own, their own story. Right. You know, not that you're not hunky-dory yeah. if you're light eyes, but you don't, you know, you don't really know. You don't and really know. He even right. said... Uh, the king is Elokar is Dalinar's Tien. He said like yes, right. he even exactly said that. like he's like oh my god, I'm just gonna I'm gonna do exactly what that bastard soldier captain did to me. Yeah, you know. Yeah, exactly. I, I was really glad that that came full circle. It shows so much foresight on uh, Sanderson's part as yeah. a writer to to have that come like full circle an entire book later, and I wonder. Um, because it was never specifically stated in the book, but I wonder if this was kind of the main reason that was holding Syl back from being able to bond with Kaladin at this point, because he was kind of walking this path of less honor. Yeah. Uh, is that kind of what... Do you guys think that's what kind of well, scared Syl away from it? I think one of the things that scared him away was that she's an honest man, and he made two packs to himself. One... To tell him to protect the king, right? 
And then mm -hmm. he swore to kill the king with more ash. And that, those two worlds conflicted, and she couldn't deal with that. Yeah, he basically put himself yeah. in a position where it's <coughs> impossible to stay and, honorable because and you're not, conflicting. Not only that, Syl also yeah. seems to really be able to see into Kaladin. And so I think she always says, like, how do you really feel, Kaladin? Because she doesn't really care about the law. What she really cares right. is, is that Kaladin's doing what he believes is right. right. That's why he's like, why do, you, why, do you, why do you let me use my power to kill Parshendi? Right. They're just trying to protect themselves. She, she's like, well, it depends on your perspective. Right. And I think he's so conflicted that he actually deep down knows that it's wrong. Yeah. And that's mm -hmm. why it's breaking Syl, because he not only has two oaths to two different people that are conflicting... But he knows that one of them is completely wrong. Right. And he's, he says it doesn't matter. It's, you know, journey before destination. It's directly breaking that first oath. Journey right. Before right. Destination. <laughs> right. So. Which was a story that Wit told him. And uh, in this section of the book, Kaladin actually goes looking for Wit as well. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but doesn't end up finding him. He has kind of a frustrating conversation with the um, shard bearer trainer, uh, Zahel. Zahel, Zahel, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and Zahel just kind of uh, brushes Kaladin aside. And Zahel's got his own uh, baggage that he's dealing with, obviously. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatever, man. Just get over it. That's what he's yeah. like. <laughs> he, he, he gives some good advice, but you're right. Yeah. Uh -huh. So that leads us to the, to the talking point of Kaladin decides he's got to go stop Moash. So and he's mean. injured as hell and can't use Stormlight which is uh, a pretty bummer, but he still beats the crap out of the two door guards pretty easily. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah. Unfortunately, he timed it wrong. Moash and uh, his buddy... Graves. Graves, who we find out is actually working with uh, the king from Gabranth. Terevangian. Terevangian. Oh, yeah. The we'll find that out later. So mm -hmm. it looks like Moash is going to be recruited into those ranks... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which, in my opinion, is so. I think the king is actually <laughs> fighting for the right goal. Right. Uh, maybe we get a little insight into it, but well, it seems like all the factions are fighting for the right goal so far. Well, kind of. When I you, mean, when it, you really look at a lot of kind of well, quote well, unquote, evil things people do. When you really look at the motivations, there's usually. Not always, but there's usually a good goal behind it. It's just yeah. So the, the well, means are just oh my yeah. God. I that. mean, look look at um, Eshenai. Her goal, her end goal was to save her people uh, from the Alethi, and right. she did what she did to save her people. To save which, her people. Which I mean, if you look at the outcome of that, it's like whoa, they really got far off course from that. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, yeah, that goes along with the same theory. I mean, you yeah. look you look at uh, Teravingian, you could tell in his uh, chapters that he had some kind of an understanding with the king, yeah. the old king, uh, Elokar's father. He, because even in his notes, he's like, Dalinar could either be a huge enemy or a huge ally, depending on what route he takes. Right, right. Um, which we'll talk, we have to talk a lot about Teravingian at some point, because yeah. he's a really interesting <laughs> character, but... Yeah, but in the end, we also have uh, a, a, another group, which obviously um, the bastard uh, Amaran is is kind of trying to do what the king was trying to do as well. But it seems like they have different motivations. Yeah, Amaran right. wanted to like bring power back to the religion, mm -hmm. and, and they needed a crisis to consolidate power. exactly crisis to consolidate power in the church. Woohoo! That sounds yeah. interestingly familiar from <laughs> history. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I think there's really, it seems like there's two factions, but in those factions, there's like several other factions. Yeah. Cause I doubt that Teravingian gives a shit about the church's power. Mm -hmm. Uh, but mm -hmm. Amaran does yet. They kind of are going about things interestingly. So, mm -hmm. yeah, everybody seems to, uh, find, you know, temporary allies for as long as their goals are aligned right but eventually that's almost always going to splinter off because yeah. as soon as you defeat the bigger uh obstacle to your vision eventually their vision your allies visions are going to come yeah. into conflict with so, yours so right. going back yeah i agree man and i and going back to uh kaladin so what do you guys think about um moash so obviously kaladin tries to fight moash who's who he gave shard blade and shard blade 
and Moash legitimately failed as a buddy. Moash yeah. broke my heart here. <laughs> yeah. I, I yeah. like wanted to cry because you really, I mean, Moash starts off as such a jerk, but like kind of rightfully so, you know, it's like he's been let down by all sorts of leaders and, you know, everybody says that they're going to be something that they're not. It's kind of similar things that Kaladin has come across with the light eyes. Except Moash feels that way about almost everybody. And then finally, Kaladin proves himself, and he's so skilled at fighting that you want to like him, even though he's kind of a, a hard ass. And then I really thought that he was going to come through for Kaladin, and he just didn't. <laughs> he, he, yeah. Kaladin even offered for them to, to kind of, like, talk about who really did, did this shit to yeah. Moash, who was really at fault, and Moash was like, w- this is for the good. <laughs> of the kingdom. Mm-hmm. And it's it's kind of a shame because Kaladin gave him what he is mm-hmm. and he just right. kind of pissed on it in a way. It was like, like, yeah. pretty bummed. The only way yeah. Moash would even have the ability to fight Kaladin is because of the power Kaladin gave him. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's just like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. At Moash is who he is primarily because of Kaladin. Right. And um and, and I agree with you guys it, it was a very disappointing um scene when uh, Moash and Graves stood toe to toe with Kaladin who was defending a very drunk and wounded Alcar. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and Kaladin only had a crutch for uh for defense. So it was basically just Kaladin's, you know, willpower versus both of them with shard shard blades. Right. And um yeah, that was it, it was unfortunate but um, Sanderson does give us a small segment uh, from Moash's perspective uh, much later in part five. And to kind of sum up things with Moash, um, you're left with this feeling that Moash realizes what he's done and how yeah. badly he's he's like fucked up because he says, I feel like I'm like drowning in a river and I'm barely keeping my head above water. Like he knows he made the wrong decision. He knows he betrayed bridge four. Um, kind of the best option left for him at this point is to go along with graves and, and, you know, become a, a fully fledged member of his group. But I think a uh, Moash does still retain like a sense of remorse. Like, man, I really fucked up back there. Like I can't, uh, so I, I have hope that if the, if um, if Kaladin and Moash ever cross paths again, Moash has a chance to maybe do the right thing next time. Do you think that Kaladin would have forgiven him? I think he might have, because he he even said it's it's not too late, Moash. Like the king doesn't know what's going on. Yeah, yeah. he's passed I think he out would've. drunk. I honestly think he still could, even though he because I think the final breaking point was when Moash finally said, "All right, I gotta kill you." But, but I mean, then, look, look but how then close. I, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I think maybe you're right. Maybe he would still forgive. Right. Him. I mean, look how close he was to wanting to see Elokar. Elokar mm-hmm. dead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then he finally came to the realization. I I feel like Kaladin will pretty much, no matter the past at this point. Well, maybe not no matter the past, but I think Kaladin's getting better at judging the person by how they are or seem to him in that moment. You know, and yeah. even if they did things in the past. I feel like he could redeem himself, but I feel like Moash isn't going to allow himself to be redeemed. I think he's going to get in his own way because he probably is going to like get in this cycle of, oh, I messed up, and now he's going to be seen as like, oh, I'm the person that messed up. I have to go further in that direction. Almost nah. like what we were saying about Zeph. It's like he refuses to see you know, that he isn't truthless because it's like, well, if I'm not, then... But then, I don't know. Right. But eventually Zeph kind of comes right. to the, the realization. But yeah, I... Uh, I mean, I hope I I kind of hope Moash gets redeemed because <laughs> you yeah. just like him. I like him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel the same way. So, uh, so this brings us to what Kaladin finally does, and we find out the answer to the long-awaited Brett bet of shard blades. I'm a genius. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fucking genius. <laughs> so, uh, and, and we gotta talk about how uh, at some point uh, we'll probably wait till the battle scene, but we're gonna have to talk about how much more badass real shard blades are. Yeah. Than um, semi dead yeah. shard blades. They'll right. Freaking scream at you for one. <laughs> they, also, they also transform into whatever you fucking want. Yeah. Right. Yes. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yes. Yeah, so like turns into the 
spear, and shield, the, yeah, spear. He's awesome. using a knife, a sword. Yeah. Like it's super dope. Yeah. Um, yeah. But anyway, we'll we'll get to that. But so Kaladin kind of gets his powers back, and we mm-hmm. find out that Syl is just almost dead. She also broke the promise, or she went back despite the Stormfather telling her not to. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this is this is also he kind of an interesting. Words. <laughs> this is kind of an interesting point, though, because if it wasn't for Moash, if it wasn't for that like kind of uh, that attempt on Elokar, mm-hmm. if it wasn't for mm-hmm. the opportunity for him to like learn the words through the fact that he came to the realization that he has to protect even those that he doesn't like, mm-hmm. he may have. I mean, who knows when he would have actually gotten his shard blade. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. And who knows if Syl would ever <laughs> come true, back. but he wouldn't have been in the position to lose his shard blade in the first place. Right, then. but he he's had Syl for a while, and she wasn't a shard blade. Yeah. It's almost like this next step of getting her back and coming to, to a new words. level of realization. Yeah, I would that, pick yeah. one. Even but if I hate them. He almost had to <laughs> semi-betray his first oath and then come to a stronger understanding yeah. in order to get to that next level. <laughs> it's yeah, weird. have an intense uh, ethical debate within yeah. himself. So uh, during this entire thing, uh, because then this is the point where Kaladin with his newfound badassery just puts Graves and puts uh, uh, Moash down. Yeah. He doesn't kill him, but he makes a hilarious judgment and puts the king with uh, <laughs> our good buddy Lupin's family <laughs> <laughs> to save him, which is absolutely hilarious, that little scene at the end. I and love we that. Could, yeah, we could probably talk about that now just because it's funny. So obviously before sure. Kaladin puts those guys down, before he goes off to the Shattered Plains because he notices that shit's hitting the fan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, he uh, he puts the king in a safe place, and that's pretty funny. I just, really, just want to comment really quick on yeah. just that moment. That moment sure. when he's like, I think he's in the middle of fighting Moash and Graves, and then he, like the book just says, and then he looks like off to his left, and then it just like cuts, yeah. and you're just like, oh man, what's going on over there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I remember this moment where I'm just like, what? <laughs> you're stopping there, you jerk. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, and then... Um, Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Captain. Uh, I was just going to say, I, I really love this uh, section with Lopin <laughs> just because his character has become such an oddity to me. He's like such a such a creative, original character. But yeah, yeah the king, um, the king is put up with uh, Lopin. He's uh, hidden there for safekeeping yeah, uh, during mom, Kaladin's right? absence. <laughs> And uh, at the end of that scene, uh, it's even revealed that Lopin is really training hard and learning how to suck in Stormlight. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's so awesome. It looks like Lope, we got another Radiant in Bridge 4. Yeah, Hell yeah. It, it, and his arm was starting to grow back. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, that, that actually, shoot. yeah, that he gets a little nub. So it sounds like he's going to be able to regrow his arm. Um, that kind of confused me a little bit, though, because wasn't mm-hmm. there, like, in one of the visions, a one-armed Radiant? Oh, or was there? Mistaken, there he what? wasn't a Radiant. He was the King's advisor. Oh, okay. okay. And he was one-armed. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, at that point, the Radiants had already betrayed gotcha. uh, the people. But um, Lopin... Uh, so this brings up a discussion about Kaladin's scar and how his scar won't heal. Yeah. And he can't put mm-hmm. a tattoo over it. And there are some discussions... Um, about that scar not healing despite mm-hmm. Stormlight because of Kaladin's view of it being a part of his identity. Mm. Ah. So it'd be interesting to see if that scar ever heals based on Kaladin's gradual uh, growth as a character. But mm-hmm. that, that would make yeah. sense, but... Um, it might, because there was a big step in this chapter right before the armies left that uh, Dalinar... Uh, and Amaran went to talk to Kaladin. Yes. And uh, Dalin was like, you need to apologize. And Kaladin was like, oh, it was like he, he was about to because he has nothing left. It's like, I'm just going to be yeah. a good soldier now. But Dalin stopped him and was like, no, not you. Not so. you. Oh, it was so <laughs> good. <laughs> and he totally set up all that stuff with Amaran with his... Body you got going and showing him the yeah. mysterious man and the shard blade. Yes. And he figured out that he was lying the whole time. Yeah, that was so cool. It was he, so uh, good. Dalinar is really starting to um, 
start to play the Game of Thrones, as they yeah. say. And uh, <laughs> he used a real cloak and dagger trick against Amaram. He baited him out with a, ch- a shard blade to see if Amaram would tell the truth and say that he found and acquired a shard blade. But of course, Amaram's not going to do that. So once Dalinar learns that little character trait about Amaram, he figures, well, if this is true, Kaladin's probably telling the truth about him killing the rest of his unit. That's so, right. yeah, yeah. I, I really applaud Dalinar on that one for taking a step up and playing uh, the Game of Thrones, as they say. <laughs> and, and, uh, Dalinar, that's what I do. It's <laughs> I don't drink and I know things. <laughs> I don't drink and I know things. Orange wine only, boys. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Never violet. Um, yeah, it was such a good move, and it was it was a really awesome spot. But of course, they can't do anything about it because Emeren's a shard uh, bearer, mm-hmm. so they have to try him and execute him for guilt immediately because you, you basically can't imprison shard holders. Yeah. Well, well right apparently you don't have law. to. Yeah, Adeline. Yeah. <laughs> well, exactly. We'll you get to that. Yes. Yeah. Oh, you let them go. Yeah. No, 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 no. And and. Um, and so that's going to be interesting because I don't think much will come from that trial, but the fact that Kaladin can rest easy knowing that it's out in the open. And that mm. at least Dalinar believes yeah. the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's, it's I think that'll go a long way right. for him. Especially I since agree. it's like, they already know that like almost all the people want to kill him. Yeah. That's already been part of the thing. As long as Dalinar believes him, then he can feel safe-ish. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and uh, so that uh, I think that also played into um, his decision eventually to save Elokar because he realized that Amaran also really believed he was doing the right the thing. The right thing, yeah. Even though he's going journey before destination, if right. you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. So um, you could you could imagine that that along with the comparison of his brother and Elokar and those kind of things all piled up and eventually made him realize that. Right. So while that's all going on, they're going out to the Shard Plains to do two things, to make their final push on the Prashendi. Dalinar is making the final push on the Prashendi. And uh, Shallan is looking for... She Number one, she comes open about her abilities as a Radiant to mm-hmm. Dalinar and then pretty much tells Dalinar off when he starts to try to direct her around. Right. <laughs> and then she's like, you, you need to go back. You're too, you know. Yeah. And, and she's basically like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not falling into that again. Yep. And then she's trying to find... Let me tell you find, how it's going to go down. <laughs> exactly. She's trying yeah. to find the portal to your your theory. So, and Dalinar realizes that depending, and it seems like the Parshendi, when they first attack them, they realize the Parshendi have these new forms with new powers. They're shooting red lightning at them. Yeah. They're having a lot more trouble fighting them. They thought that they were going to override them. And uh, he realizes that Shallan's, their only escape route is to um, is to find, yeah, is, is basically to um, open the portal. Open the but portal, and find I think it. Right. he figured that out like towards the end of the journey because there's no way they'll be able to get back to... Yep. The through the shadow plane. The planes. storms are coming. Right. They realize like, something mm-hmm. weird's going on. They're getting ambushed. Their supplies are running low. They're in bad shape. <laughs> right. It's revealed to it right around this part that the storm father himself is really pissed at what's happening here. Yeah. So yeah. he's sending his own like like handmade storms at the armies to try and just wipe everybody out. Yeah. He's like, the only sure. thing that I could offer you is a <laughs> cleansing of your bodies. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, screw this fight. I'm just going to try to knock them all off. So the Stormfather almost went seems... all Kylo Ren about it. Yes, he, yes, he did. Yeah. <laughs> so the Stormfather, yes, he, he, really, he really feels like he's so jaded as well from yeah. the betrayal, mm-hmm. and he has his own development to, to handle. Yeah, I mean, so, he's right. basically seen a lot of the past as like literally... I mean, he's like all the Spren are basically his children, right? Yeah. So he sees yeah. it's like these people have murdered so many of my kids. Yeah, it's basically he's got he's got to be pretty uh, pretty upset pretty as well. So <laughs> yeah, um, he's got a little Kaladin in him. Exactly, <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like he's got a little Kaladin in him. Yeah. So let's take a quick break and um, and just refill, and then we'll get right back to this episode. Not too new episode, but. Um, just kind of refill and reset, and uh, then we will be back. Uh, be back. So, see you in a few minutes. And 
and we're live again. Back from our break. Boom. Uh, Dross, you good to go? I am live, sir. All right. That break um, was brought to you by likeit.net. Yeah. <laughs> that, <laughs> L-Y-K-E-T. L-Y-K-E-T. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. So we're back. We're on the Shattered Plains. Um, Adolin, they get ambushed by the Parshendi. You know, Shen comes back, actually. Our yeah. Good buddy he Shen. does. Uh, Relaine, his real name. And uh, he realizes, because remember, he left Kaladin. He's like, I need to go, probably because he was hearing the calling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then when he got there, they were all red-eyed red eyes. Be- devils. Uh. Red-eyed Horsion. devils. Horsion. Question, do you guys think that this is really, the storm form is the Voidbringer? Or I personally think they've got another form to go before they're true Voidbringers. But well, they are controlled by the guys. Well, yeah. the um, the what you call it, the uh, Storm Father. Doesn't he say towards the end that the storm they're bringing will turn all of the like uh, simple forms or whatever like, into void bringers? It sounds like whatever storm this this the storm passes. Storm. Yeah, the, and and so yeah. now it's kind of crazy, right? Because you've got this one storm, their storm, which it sounds like basically blows around the world, right? So mm-hmm. Nonstop. Right. But by the time it gets to the end, it kind of dies down and then it like when it goes back to the origin it rebuilds it rebuilds something you, magnifies now it. now you have another one that's coming coming the other way the other way and it sounds like every time that they run into each other randomly is gonna be just crazy oh, yeah, yeah. do we get It'll any be... information about how widespread that chaos is gonna be is it gonna be like right on the epicenter of like where it, well, they hit together oh, so or is it gonna just like destroy the world oh. every time there'll be like a huge like that's one problem, but like right. once that storm goes through every city, the Everstorm, it's gonna turn all of Sandy yeah. out in it into Parchment. into Parchment, into for Sandy, uh, into storm the form. Storm, storm form, storm form, yeah. form yeah. And those, are they just gonna like since they are connected to song, are they all just gonna start revolting like immediately? Yeah, and it's it it's, sounds it's, like it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Go ahead, Captain. And I was just going to say, it'll, it'll be interesting to see what happens with that one group of Parshendi who um, fled the rest of the Parshendi when I was kind of seizing control, when she right. kind of threw her coup. Um, there was a large group of them. Uh, I's mother was included in that group, and they fled um, and went into hiding somewhere. So it'll be interesting to see if they, since they avoided the storm form, if they'll survive, uh, what's to this, come? Yeah. Mm. The one thing that I did notice is it sounds like if they, if the, f- if the Parshendi or the Parshmen already are synced with a Spren, then they are not in danger of, because Shen survived it. He's, mm-hmm. he, uh, ha- is a warrior form. So he's right. attached to, uh, a, a, a good Spren, an earth Spren or whatever you'd call it. Um, is he? yeah. Cause to get to warrior form, they have to bond with, a uh, spren mm. that the humans have. So That's I right. think that if you're bonded to a spren, you're not in danger of ba- basically being possessed by the storm spren. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think this is confirmed, but I think they kind of confirmed it through that. But it, I think the reason the Parshmen are so dangerous is because the dull, they're basically less than dull form. Mm-hmm. They're just open. No attached spren. I think they're literally open so, to be right. possessed by the storm spring. So the big hurricane would essentially turn them into the storm form like right off the bat. Very well could. Now we have to get confirmation on that. Right. Um, but it sounds like it could be that way. It just so. seems like so mm-hmm. weird. It's like uh, for the whole yeah. time we've been thinking like, oh, the, uh, the Alethi have been using these dull forms as like slaves and that's so wrong. But now like almost their own people are about to just do the same thing. Like, against their will, all of these dull forms are just going to be warriors against whether they want to or not. Not even warriors. Mm-hmm. Or, be storm or storm form. form. Yeah. That's what I mean. So they'll be red-eyed <clears throat> demons. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is the damage that this is going to cause because the world has adapted over millennium to always protect itself against a storm coming from one direction. Right. So all of the buildings and walls and right, designs yeah. are all facing the wrong, the way, wrong way to handle the other side. And yeah. <laughs> that sounds like... it. Also, the thing is, like, think about areas like Shen, Shenovar or whatever. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, where they were hardly ever touched by the storm because it was always at the end of the sequence. Yeah. 
Is that the beginning of the other storm sequence? Is that going to just... Is this going to affect that? I believe it is. Yeah, I believe it is, Demon. I think at one point they mentioned Shinovar is going to get that storm from the east first, and then it'll blow over the rest of the Oh, but all that beautiful grass. Yeah, all that grass. (laughs) And those chickens. (laughs) 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 Uh, Just as a quick side note, I thought it was super adorable that uh, child version of Shallan thought that a parrot was a void bringer <laughs> in one of her flashbacks. Yep. Dude, so um, anyway, back to this. So Shalon, obviously, we talked a lot about her past. She's kind of like come up uh, and really accepted her role. She even talked to Dalinar and basically let him know that I'm a Radiant. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe not a Radiant yet, but essentially have right. the powers of a Radiant. And she, during this whole battle, which is going... I think they basically describe it as a stalemate, which they did not expect. Mm-hmm. Because they they way outnumber the Parshendi, right. and they're fighting mm-hmm. to a stalemate. Adeline's getting damaged. Um, they're losing a ton of men. The storms are coming in and starting to kill people. You know, um, mm-hmm. it's it's basically a gigantic mess. Mm-hmm. I will say that Adeline does manage to kick Eshenai off a plateau. Yes. <laughs> and is saved by the bridgeman. <laughs> as he's about to fall. But that was a good win. I highly doubt she's dead, but yeah. it was a good win all the same. Mm-hmm. Um, so Shalon figures out how to get into Eurothiru. Mm-hmm. And it's really interesting. So it sounds like only Radiance really can use the portals mm-hmm. because you can't use a dead shard blade. You have to use a living shard blade. A living blade. shard blade. Which leads us to realize that Shallan's shard blade has actually been patterned all along. Right. Ah. Which, ah. which mm. Brett made an awesome observation. I didn't want to say anything before he finished <laughs> the book, but he basically said, "Is there any significance to when they were using uh, Shallan's shard blade in an adjusted size to right. help them cut stuff?" <laughs> and I was like, "Because oh, he's got a living shard he's blade. He's a living shard blade. So he can change forms can just change like silk could. Yep. Yeah. Mm. So I was like, Good revelation." Catch. <laughs> Lies. <laughs> awesome. So, um, so Shalon actually, we realized that she had this when she was a kid. Yeah, she had this when she was a kid, and her mom was actually trying to kill her because she was part of that group that was trying to stop the radiance from returning. I just thought right. of something though, and sorry to interrupt your train of thought, but mm-hmm. uh, if. Pattern is her shard blade, and it's a living shard blade. Then why does why in the beginning when we're getting hints of Shallan possibly having a shard blade, do we get reference to ten heartbeats? I thought living shard blades don't need to be summoned. Right, that's a good question. But remember, she doesn't really know what she is. She only knows what she's supposed to know. Right. So the other thing is mm. when her father put the shard blade away behind the painting. The reality was. She could just call it back whenever she wanted. Mm -hmm. Uh, So you think it's just that she thought it was supposed to take 10 heartbeats, so therefore she made it take 10 heartbeats? She put a block in her memory and was trying very hard not to acknowledge what she already knew, which was part Mm -hmm. of her growth story. Uh, We also find out that her dad was innocent. Right. Yes. For a while. (laughs) Yes. Now, it turned him into a monster. Yeah. But um, that's... Poor, poor Papa. Yeah, and that's yeah. why. And, and they were always all her brothers were constantly um, accusing him, accusing and they were always and, wondering why yeah. Shalon was like he didn't do it. Pretty much everybody that knew about it yeah. suspected him almost. Mm-hmm. So she, I think, she felt very guilty about uh, the fact that uh, it was basically her fault that her family destroyed. But not really. It was really her mom's fault. It was her mom's fault though, well, because she I mean, like, had on still. Yeah. It was Pat on sports. He thinks it's six. I hate you. Yeah. But I'm not going to kill you. <laughs> yeah, She's that, looking for somebody to blame. Yeah. But somebody really she to needs blame, to just blame yeah. her mom. Because her mom literally was trying to kill her. Yeah. yeah. So. And, wh- and why? I, I kind of missed a little bit exactly why that is. Did we? She's part of the group that was trying to prevent stop them. the Void. So there's two philosophies. There's people that are trying to bring the Void Bringers back. Right. In order to bring the Radiance back. Or mm-hmm. bring the Radiance... But there's another group that believes if you bring the Radiance back, oh, that's you're right. bringing the Voidbringers and back. And she saw the powers in Shalon. So she's like, we need to kill her because right. we can't have the Voidbringers come back. Right. Yeah. 
So there's two factions that are believing. And, and really the funny thing about it is it seems like it doesn't freaking matter. It, they're all coming back, and they're actually coming back unrelated. Yeah, it's, yeah. Just, it's just happening anyway. It's just happening yeah. anyway. So Everybody likes to think they have such control over their surroundings, but yeah. no, nah, it's just happening. Telling them would make <laughs> yeah. a difference, but yeah. it doesn't. It's still going to come yep. back. And that was a pretty harsh, heartbreaking scene where she kills her father, strangling him with oh. the... Uh, the chain. The chain, yeah, yeah. That he gave her. Oh, and, man. And then we find out why um, Nan Blot has a gimp leg mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. that scene as well, which is pretty crazy. Yeah. But, sh- but yeah. Shalon figures out how to open up the portal. Renarin is freaking out. And we realize later that he's freaking out because he keeps trying to call the shard blade the shard blade. screaming in his brain. And right. then also, he seems to be able to see the future. Yeah. So, interesting enough, we find out that Renarin has these abilities and has had them for a while, but we never read from his perspective, so we don't get to see what's going on. Yeah. Is it, so is it the right. intro? I thought it said something like, he's a truth seer. Yeah, a truth yeah. seer. And we find out, if you read the book again, that one of his stops on his glasses is when he first started manifesting the powers because yeah. he absorbed the storm light and he healed his eyes. Healed his eyes. Yep. Right. Interesting. I also mm. assume it healed his blood illness too, or whatever that was. Right. I yeah. mean, his his blood illness alone, it it either healed it or it could even have been some kind of a strange fit that he would have. Maybe if he's a true seer, we don't know this, right? Yeah. But it either healed him or what if his fits were actually moments of psychic clairvoyance that mm-hmm. he was starting Ooh. to. Manifest. To manifest. I'm yeah. curious about that. So re- yeah. readers, keep an eye on Renar and over the next book three. I think yeah. he's going to take a huge role in that in the uh, upcoming books. I'm I'm willing to page pay. one Oathbringer I, Renarin dead. I guess I everyone a hundred push-ups for that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm willing to bet that we're going to finally get to read from his perspective. In yeah, book, mm, I hope so because I I'm increasingly finding him to be a very interesting yeah. character. So I hope yeah. he mans up a little bit in the next book. Yeah, I think he will. Yeah. Because yeah. he was just freaking out. I think he was just had no idea what was happening to him. Yeah. Because yeah. no one really explained that, anything. But yeah. yeah. I I almost wonder if so. I want to bring this up to you guys, but so it seems like um, we don't know. But being a radiant, whether we we don't really know if it's just personality. Is it like some kind of genetic thing? Mm-hmm. But a uh, Yasna obviously manifested powers. And so did Renarin. Mm-hmm. And clearly Dalinar has some form of manifestation, mm-hmm. which he forces. He just demanded it. He demanded it. <laughs> but I mean, could he demand it if he didn't have it already? You know what I mean? Yeah. Interesting. I don't know. But what I am curious about is the other two cousins, Elokar, who sees, and I've always thought, and I've been oh. saying this throughout the books as we read it, mm-hmm. but I wonder if Elokar's paranoia is coming from him Seeing things, seeing things, right. specifically really yeah. seeing things. Right. Like, is he see Spren? He right. did say when he confronted shadows uh, or something. Um, right Kaladin, yeah. that when you came, the shadows went away. I right. didn't see them yes. anymore. I think is he talking about Spren? Like yeah. those lies, Spren that Shalana it al- found. It also kind of yeah. It also makes me wonder, like with such a concentration of <laughs> what seemed to be radiance, kind of in the same area now. Like, is it like one appears and then they are, and then those Spren are kind of attracted yeah, to that area and start giving people powers in that area, or are the people that have the powers attracted to each other, or is this just all a big coincidence? Yeah, it's it's interesting. Well, we do have we know we have Lift who's somewhere else, and then we mm-hmm. know we have. Oh, I, uh, I, I personally think more. the Merchant Girl is probably going to end up becoming one because yeah. who else would? Yeah, don't you think? Because, I mean, she shattered her legs in the fall, mm-hmm. and yeah. then the thing gave her a sprint. Right. And yeah. it, it would be weird to me if... If she wasn't. If she wasn't going to become one. It yeah. just seems like he's setting us up for, for that. Um, but cool. then again, who knows? There are definitely a lot of interlude yeah. characters that but, I'm looking forward to seeing yeah. more. Because mm-hmm. also, during the battle, uh, I guess after the battle, Tef, I think it was... Mm-hmm told someone like oh yeah i saw a bunch of the vision glowing so right. like yeah. they were absorbing stormlight i wanted to talk about that because in this battle the bridgemen start glowing especially when kaladin's fighting above them right and in the um part of 
this book where they're going over the Radiance abilities, you know, like after the book's over, there's a section where it says, oh, the um, Windrunners worked as a unit, always as a unit. And they talked a little bit about how the wind runners would work, and mm-hmm. I'm almost wondering if Kaladin, being the wind runner in the mm-hmm. hierarchy, they had like a set hierarchy, if he's going to kind of bestow power because they work as a unit into right. loyal people that will become fitting Ooh. for his unit. So Kaladin almost becomes like their sill. He's just in like a way. giving. I, or maybe they <laughs> get their own honor right. sprint, but they said that they always were working as in in unified units. They right. all had different. It talked a little bit about how each one would work. I could also see it possibly being a bit of both, where it's like, because Kaladin's honorable, his group is going to be made up of people he sees as honorable, and then Honor Sprint could be attracted to them. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. So I think we're going to find that out, but I suspect that um, the Bridgemen may either fall into that unit or maybe... You know, I don't yeah. know. We're going to have to find out. But, yeah. I mean, at the end of the book, Kaladin basically gets permission and extra stormlight to go save his family. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love how, we, how they're like, so you're going to fly there? He's like, well, I'm going to fall there. <laughs> <laughs> so awesome. <laughs> yeah. But even better now, they I think they're going to give him enough stormlight to get a good head start on one of the portals. Right. Now, interestingly, now that there's so many radiants coming around... Stormlight is becoming like fossil fuel. <laughs> yeah. They're literally yeah. and then and then so to just... use the portals, they're literally running dry of it. So yeah. I suspect that people are gonna start reverting back to candles a lot more often nowadays. Mm. Yeah, they're gonna start realizing the value of this yeah. old. Currency. And remember how we talked about how oh they're like, oh, the, when it has stormlight in it, it's worth a little bit more. Right. Well, now I think we see why. Right. And I think the currency system may completely change even. Yeah. So I found it kind of interesting though that they need or it seems like most people need that intermediary though they need the the orb or whatever yeah they need that gem or whatever that well, holds it to be they, able to do it like kaladin they, had to have a few in his pocket when he was out in the storm he no, couldn't just absorb it no from no he the, could when he I, was in the storm i thought he absorbed zeth and him were both constantly absorbing oh, it which is they? why when he cut zeth several times i thought zeth he just, would just had fall some in, in the his, storm he would fall in the storm and just like immediately rejuvenate. Why did yeah. Teft put some in his pocket then? I think he that thought Kaladin, he needed them. Yeah, and also I think that's at a more advanced level. Mm. So I think before he they were do really it struggling to, I got you. To, okay. um, to do it. And I think that might have something to do with, and maybe not. Maybe when Kaladin was blowing in the storm when he would, when he ha- held on to that, mm-hmm. it might not have mattered. Maybe he right. would keep healing, but he could not take enough stormlight in back then. To so it seems like if you are advanced enough, if you train these abilities enough that in a storm, you're almost invincible. It seems like yeah. that. Well, I mean, it, it almost seemed like Kaladin needed a uh, single uh, spinal shot to take Zeth out because he kept rejuvenating no matter how many times he got cut. Right. right. The one thing important to note is if you have an honor blade, you seem to use Stormlight at a significantly faster rate. Right. So yeah. it seems like... I don't know about the heralds. Like the heralds, the one herald at the end who gives Zeth that blade, um, mm-hmm. it seems like he may not lose his powers. So I'm what I'm wondering is, is it really the honor blade? The honor blade definitely gives the powers of the herald to you, but the guy didn't seem to care about giving his honor blade away. So maybe he still has powers. Right. You're uh, talking about, about darkness, who appeared in darkness, the section correct. with um, lift, right? Right, and then of course at the very end of the book, when he revives, um, Zeth, re- rebirths him. Yeah. Maybe maybe it depends if you're the one that created the blade or you're the one yeah. that has well, gotten the blade. The way that it was described, but we don't know for fact what really happened. But it was basically Honor, who is the Almighty, right. or what the men considered Almighty, who mm-hmm. died bestowed the honor blades onto the men right. that he thought maybe exemplified those. And mm-hmm. the Spren, who are pieces of honor, seem to copy those abilities and then bestow them to men, the same powers emulated off of the honor blades that mm-hmm. um, honor eventually or originally put out. 
they copied him and then bestowed their own powers on their own choice. So it kind of seems like the the Honor Blades are the Heralds, mm -hmm. and the Heralds bestowed a, seemed to originally bestow additional powers to the Radiance. No, the uh, Honor says to Dalinar that he didn't foresee the Radiance. Oh. He said the Spren did that by themselves. Oh, interesting. Hmm. He yeah. said the Spren started to emulate, if you remember that vision, Dalinar yeah, asks him. I do not, yeah. Um, the honor of the dead uh, god says, basically, I didn't foresee the Spren doing that, mm -hmm. but it worked like it was good. Do you think that there's anybody else at honor's level, at, the, at that Odium level? Odium clearly is Odium. Uh, ahead of it. Um, mm -hmm. And I, what I think from reading other Sanderson books is that um, they, there's something about these shards, but I think that they call them shard blades because they're like micro shards. Right. So when Honor died, I'm guessing that he was the holder of a shard, like mm -hmm. from Mistborn, if you've read that, the one who has the shard eventually kind of, in essence, becomes like a god. Mm -hmm. And it has certain, um, like, personality traits of that shard. Right. And so I think that Honor was like an honorable god, but whatever Odium is, is another one of them who exemplifies another type. I don't know all the facts. I'm so sure do you guys out there think that, that there's a possibility that um, <clears throat> unite them doesn't mean to unite the heralds, but to get all the honor blades together and unite them into honor? I think Ooh. that honor is dead. No matter what, because... But you said, but potentially that power could be passed on to whoever could. has that they could. shard. You're right. So, so what if you were able to put together all the honor blades back into the shard... Maybe you could. ...and become honor? Maybe you could. Yeah. But the, uh, the recommendation that honor gives to Dalinar is to get Odium to um, assign a... Right, a champion. champion. A, a champion. Mm. So I almost wonder if, if assigning a champion is maybe putting a lot of his power into one person. Into one person. And then you, there may be some rules on how... Uh, we don't know all this yet. Right. right? This is all speculation. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. We don't know how Odium can actually interact. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm You know? So maybe if he gets worried enough, he might assign a champion to yeah. get some more physical force down on, you know, the material plane. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah that is. Interesting. So we, <laughs> we, have, we have a lot to learn about this, but... I don't think they're true gods. I think they're people that obtain the full shard. Well, I think that just the idea of, of gods is kind of interesting. Like, what exactly is a god? We see god through our religions in a certain way. Yeah. But we don't know if there are gods or a god if they're really that way. Yep. You know, like, if we mm -hmm. create AI in a computer, we would seem like a god to it. It's mm -hmm. like this ethereal, mm -hmm. unobtainable space that exactly. they can't enter. And we have complete control over their world, but maybe the gods are bound by certain rules and right. and things that we can't understand as well. Yeah. You know, we're not gods in our world. We're only gods in the computer world because we can manipulate everything. Maybe they, these gods are similar. Yeah, I, I suspect we're going to learn a lot more. I remember that in um, in Mistborn, the, the thing that had the shard mm -hmm. was able to manipulate written words on paper. Mm-hmm. And it was pretty crazy because it was basically just rewriting history constantly. Right. And so huh. they had to find ways to um, write things down so that it couldn't be influenced. And that that God had certain rules that it would work by. So like I wonder, possibly manipulating the pigment of your skin. I. <laughs> I won't. No, I, that's a different book okay. series. That's a totally different book series. But I'm simply drawing an assignment that I think Sanderson's going to put some interesting rules on how the shards work right will huh. be yeah heavy too so cool and um, the next book is called Oathbringer, so it might be focusing on these shards a bit more i have to ask you guys another question real quick sure so oh, is this we the... talked about this a little bit last time and now that we're all done with the book i right. can bring it up even more what do you think about the crazy guy do you think he's really one of the heralds the guy who came back oh, the from crazy home? guy yeah, we do get a little bit more of him in these chapters. He's certainly a badass mm -hmm. when he becomes lucid because he caught the arrow in his finger right. when, um, when Amaran was breaking him out. But mm -hmm. what do you guys think first? Then I'm going to go into my spiel. I think there's a very high likelihood that he is that 10th um, Herald who was betrayed by all the other ones in the very first prologue of book one. Mm -hmm. um, 
that would kind of explain like because he's been um, betrayed and like quote unquote dead for so long, it's had a really bad influence and impact on his like sanity and his awareness and his connection to the real world. Yeah. So I think that there is a high likely uh, high likelihood that he is that um, tenth herald who was originally betrayed by the other by the other nine. What that, do you guys think? I think that that, that, could, that could make sense simply because, um, I mean, it seems like going back to the hellish place mm-hmm. happened for a kind of unprecedented amount of time, right. potentially. He does say, so like, it could he seems cause so... him to go crazy. And it, like, changed the loop, right? And then when the next yeah. desolation comes, if that's what this is, he's able to come back, right. and now he's nuts it sounds like normally they come back based on his rantings it seems like normally they come back in like men are still in stone age and they teach him how to like bronze like yeah. he says, come back, we'll teach you how to uh forge bronze and yeah yeah like, yeah and, and but then like they're so much more advanced this time because of probably the fact that the heralds stayed and influenced the yeah. world a little bit what do you think though yeah. ben i do think he's uh one of the heralds but uh one thing that bothers me is that is his blade a shaw blade? Yes. It should be an honor blade. Somebody else noticed. Yeah. Oh. Like, so if that's him, and he comes back from the wherever he goes, they already have like the honor blade, but that's right. just a shaw blade that Delano now possesses. Right. If Dalinar possesses this and it's an honor blade, remember Kaladin was able to touch an honor blade without it screaming. Mm-hmm. So why, when Dalinar bonded the Stormfather, did that honor blade scream? Right. Mm. That's what's throwing me yeah. off. So, like, I wonder now, is that guy really the Herald? Is that really an honor blade? I'm glad you mm. caught that. I was, that was driving me nuts. That, I didn't want to say that until we got to the end of the book, because it's pretty yeah, much right Yeah, I thought about end. that. And I'm like, is that guy not really a Herald? Because, right. Or, or maybe there's a rule we don't know. Like, maybe honor blades scream at you no matter what, unless you're holding the honor blade of your your uh, faction faction yeah, yeah right but i don't know right <laughs> something to think about what if that guy's not really a herald yeah. dang because <laughs> uh Delano did say like it feels weird to hold this on a blade oh not on a blade shaw blade yeah because and he thought maybe just because it's not his uh original shaw blade it's just right. a new one and he's not used to it right but maybe it was because he was starting yeah. to bond the nice right. uh, friend mm-hmm. and so it was starting to Anyway, so, well, actually, the other thing is we know that Kaladin was able to hold Shallans without it screaming, too, because it was mm-hmm. live. Mm-hmm. So there's kind of... We, anyway, I just wanted to bring it up because yeah. we don't know. Yeah. It seems like he should be the... Uh, or or maybe maybe, it, maybe it, Wit just pulled a, a loop-de-loop on him. Because remember, Wit was there when he came, and he, like, dropped the oh, blade. Oh, yeah. So what if Wit took the real honor blade and... <laughs> And just like swapped, swapped it. Swapped yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I don't know though. I don't swapped know. it with the one that uh, Adeline threw out the window after he killed Sadius. Yeah. <laughs> but basically, <laughs> I'm, I'm keeping my eyeball yeah. on that supposed herald. Interesting. Yeah. It does seem a little weird. It seems like a little weird that he wouldn't be the uh, herald just because. To have, like, those badass features, but also just be kind of crazy, spouting off random things. Yeah. Like, maybe he knows about, you know, he knows the lore of the Heralds, and so he just, like, obviously knows the story. You can, yeah. mm-hmm. you can ramble off whatever you want. You know, there's people in New York holding up signs claiming they're <laughs> Jesus as well, you know? It's yeah. like, but not many of those people can also do the badass things that yeah, he can do. So, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. So it's, like, it's weird to have that combination of, okay, he's potentially crazy or maybe he's playing the game in some way i don't know but he also has these abilities you know super Mm -hmm. interesting anyway i wanted to bring that up so um the fight between kaladin and zeth was so badass Mm -hmm. um (laughs) just flying around uh kaladin way way more advanced with his shards obviously because uh silk could turn into whatever he needs that i thought was amazing Mm -hmm. yeah he finally realized oh i like a spear but then he's like oh it's too we're too close quarters. Knife. Yeah. Oh, this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a, for the record, that would be a pretty hard fight scene to choreograph if they ever made a movie or show. Oh, of, I already uh, know how I'm going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Super awesome. Um, 
I, I will say we own some honorable mention to some of our... We might have to copy the Talking Dead and do some honorable mentions for <laughs> characters. Uh, I'd like to honorably mention Adolin's horse. Aww. Um, Aww. Who mm. took a lightning bolt, a rest, red lightning bolt. Rest in pieces. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> and I'd also like to honorably mention the High Prince. Um, Rorion. What was his? R- yeah, Rorion. Mm-hmm. Uh, who was known as a coward for throughout the entire book, but for Dalinar, charged Seth with his men blindly. <laughs> um, yeah. And his way of death was actually a little sad because he basically mm-hmm. just got launched yeah. a skyscraper worth into the sky. And uh, it almost happened to Dalinar, too. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Um, I will say that Dalinar again showed his badassery by fighting Zeth with that weird shard blade. Yeah. And mm-hmm. even Adolin was like, oh, damn. damn. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> we know how good Adolin is. Yeah. He got yeah. manhandled. Um, Dalinar, interesting, when he bonded the Stormfather, which was a badass scene in itself, because he basically just demanded it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he the Stormfather said then I'm not gonna be a sprint like that. I'm not gonna come when you call. Yeah. I'm not gonna turn into a shard for you. You're pretty much screwed. And I feel like as much as I know Delinar is shifting his role to a leader, he's still such a badass fighter that it's a shame that he's not gonna be able to use a shard. <laughs> yeah. So. But I mean he still can come when he wants. He just has to be very sure that he's <laughs> gonna summon before he gets into too much trouble well he does <laughs> get to breathe stormlight in right and he, that should also mean that whatever his or did he say he's not going to shard for him at all he's, he's not said, gonna shard for him. Oh, i thought he said it, i won't be like summon just willy-nilly but i will do it sometimes no, but he's he, just not going he to said i won't be summoned uh, and i won't be your shard but well Delinar, we don't know what his abilities are but right? uh, he seems he did say that in, in the first half of that paragraph but then he said at the end you'll be a radiant with no shards. Mm. Yeah. So I thought the same thing you did, that maybe he'll only come when he wants. Every now and then, but yeah, he's just going to be nothing. And you can't, it's not like he can pick up another shard blade and no, have that exactly. at the same time. Now, we don't know. Technically, you bought an honor blade, maybe. Maybe an honor blade, you're right. If, if well, we'll find out. Because yeah. you don't know if that was an honor blade or not. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What he had. Although the Stormfather asked him not to touch that. Yeah. Yeah, he asked him to put it. To it could have been because he was dead. Exactly. Which, if it is dead, that brings us back to the question of whether that guy's, uh, if that guy's really a, a herald or not. But we'll yeah. get there. Um, <laughs> but I, I think um, I'm really interested because, as uh, the hitman mentioned, um, a bind uh, bondsmith. bondsmith. That was it. So Dalinar becomes a bondsmith, and they're very rare. I think, like Ben mentioned, you said yeah. there was only... At, and at the three. end of the book, they said there was only three of them in all of Radiant history. Mm-hmm. So these guys are... They may they may not need a shard blade. I don't know. I guess we're mm. going to find out what those abilities are. Yeah. So, um, kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. We're open book now. There we got, we're at the end of the book. What do you guys think? We can talk about anything now. Any open comments? Speculation. Books? Speculation. Um, obviously, Kaladin's going to save his folks, which I think is cool. Yes. Um, he's falling there right now. He's falling there right. right now. <laughs> I, uh, I really want to talk quickly about the epilogue with yes. uh, oh, Wit we gotta, oh, with Wit. and we the gotta reveal... T- Yes, I totally Yasna. forgot. Oh my god, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, Yasna's alive. Oh, not um, surprised anybody. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think we all saw it coming, but it was still an amazing moment anyway. Uh, yeah, just Whit a little writer's tip, Brent, Brent, uh, Brandon Sanderson. Um, don't make such an amazing character if you want us to believe she's dead. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously, I'm just joking. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, Wit was playing his classic role and um, and being his usual witty self and uh, yeah. <laughs> and um, it was a really great uh, inner monologue with Wit where he was saying um, he was almost undercutting his own like knowledge and ability saying it's really like true power comes from your audience's expectations <laughs> no matter how good or how powerful like you might be. If it's it's what really matters is how the audience perceives you. And so I, I thought that was a really kind of an interesting um, uh, thing for him to think about in his own inner monologue, because wit seems to be above most of what's going on. And he seems to have 
some in, a lot of information about what's right. happening to the world as, as a whole. Uh, but he says to Yasna, there are some things that I know that you don't know. And there are some things that you know that I don't know. So we should help each other out. <laughs> oh. Ah. And, and I'd also like to point out that Yasna was just chilling in um, Shardsmere. Uh-huh. Shardsmar this whole time. Yeah, right. Is... Shadesmar, yep. Shadesmar, thank you. Shadesmar, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought it was also so hilarious when she's like, the stuff we have to do, we need to found the Night Rage, and it's like, oh, that's done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the boys windows are back. Oh, yeah, we're taking care of that. Yeah, we're done. We need to f- yep. get to uh, the sacred city. We've already been there. Yeah, we're there. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm a fan. <laughs> and and I'm, really, I'm really curious to see, because she clearly, like, basically stayed in uh, Shadesmere to get, Shadesmar or whatever, uh-huh. to get mm-hmm. all of this information. Right. right. She was yeah. basically getting all this information out of the Sprint, mm-hmm. which sounds like maybe that's something that Wit wants. Right. Yes. Maybe some stuff that Wit needs to fill in some uh, informational holes. But there. I also mm-hmm. think this... Shows a pretty big character flaw for Yasna. Mm-hmm. Or weakness, if you will. Yeah. That she is unwilling to act until she has information. She's not willing to go out and search for it in the real world. Mm-hmm. Well, Shaolin, it's like, I know enough. I, I think it's almost going to go and find it. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then she found it, and then it left Yasna, who is perhaps still researching... This kind of in the dust a little there, bit. Yeah. Trying to find mm-hmm. answers instead of looking for answers out there. Right. And yeah, that's true, Ben. She, she may put too much value on the research and not yeah. enough value on the doing. She right, need to yeah. Find that balance. She's not yeah. taking an active role in the real world where all of these events are actually happening. She's right. too busy trying to prepare, prepare, prepare. Yeah. yeah. And then she might have the answers, but it's too late. Like, they yeah. already have the answers. Mm-hmm. They already yeah. have all that stuff. It's going to be interesting when they, because she's back, but she's not really back in the fray yet. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. She needs to sync mm-hmm. up with all these folks, and it's going to be interesting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. What do you guys think about the king of Garbranth? Ooh, Teravangian, that son of a bitch. Yeah, we actually get a chapter with his inner monologue, and we learn a very interesting um, <laughs> bit of character development with uh, Teravangian. Apparently, his IQ sporadically jumps on oh, a day-to-day yeah, I forgot basis. About that. That's so really, good. really a weird, like, unique flaw. But his um, his IQ level really, really sporadically jumps on a daily basis. So he's yeah. trying to a rule his kingdom and b come up with this elaborate diagram for <laughs> essentially diagram. preventing a lot of the um, you know, the day of recreants and all of the the um, Armageddon events that are happening. And so he's kind of, he almost finds himself rethinking and reanalyzing all of his plans on a daily basis, um, which makes him cautious and dangerous. It creates an exploitable flaw for him. um, But it's also really terrifying getting like his inner monologue because he was saying at one point like, oh, on my smart days, I just want to literally execute everybody who's got a low IQ in my city, which (laughs) is really terrifying. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. he's like, oh, that was such a brilliant idea I came up with. (laughs) I know it's really crazy. And that's why he has his uh, great system set up. If he tests too smart or if he tests too dumb. He's stuck in his room all day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He can't enact any laws mm-hmm. uh, for three days. So just in case he thinks that he's really smart and he tries to enact a law. <laughs> this, this character right. kind of makes me feel like that for U.S. president, we should have three. We should have a 200 to 300 IQ range. We should have like a 100 to 200 IQ range and then like a 0 to 100 IQ they range. They alternate and days. They, and they all like just convert... Like, uh, All communicate days, with each yeah. other their ideas and how it affects the different intelligence levels. And lock, democratically lock plan and make yeah. decisions. <laughs> lock two of them up at a time and let one of them out. Yeah. <laughs> every day and just let them, like, uh, balance each other Today out. Today is the zero to 100 level. I, <laughs> yeah, I will say that. Uh, Everyone Tara, hide in your homes. <laughs> so, uh, Teravangian using Zeth has just become a very powerful person. If you think about it in a way, 
he turned uh, Cabranth into, he basically absorbed two or three other kingdoms. Right, yeah. he got all of Yaakoved in all his of Yaakoved. kingdom. And uh, he missed, um, he missed Amir or whatever that place, mm-hmm. um, the place where Lyft was. Yeah. Azith, Azith oh, yeah. or whatever it was. He right. missed uh, Azith because they, they, they got a new leader out of the miracle that happened there. But, um, <laughs> Which is Gox. But, yeah, Gox. <laughs> but they, uh, they so for now at least, but I mean. And that was Lyft, about, right? That was the whole yeah, chapter of Lyft. Yeah, but, exactly, but when yeah. You, when you think about how powerful he's become, he's basically tripled the size of his kingdom, at least. He yeah. has, yeah. And, Yakovet uh, is a pretty big country on the map, too. Yeah. And uh, made himself look like a hero. So his diagram certainly seems to be working. Mm-hmm. Um, however, it didn't account for the fact that they might accidentally cause the radiance. Because uh, that's what... Um, Kirk Graves said as they were running away, he's like, I didn't take into account what our actions would actually cause. Yeah. We were trying to separate Kaladin and Dalinar, and we we kind of screwed up there. But Also um, on the note of uh, his his diagram seems to actually be working, like his the tracking of his uh, IQ yeah. level seems to be working. I, I loved that one part where he's talking to like his assistant or whatever. Uh-huh. And just like, oh, we need to find a new you know metric for the diagram because it greatly failed today. Yeah. It says that you're just average, and he's just like, I just think you underestimate average people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just loved that line. It was so cool. I, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I have to say, hearing his monologue, he seems to be getting a bit worried because he's anxious and hoping that he has another uh, moment of genius Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so that he could revise the current diagram for current events. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, like any equation, it needs to be... Recalculated. Uh, yeah. And he and they said that he may never have that opportunity in his lifespan. Um, yeah, just because, statistically speaking, yeah. he could it could never come, or it could just happen right now or tomorrow. Yeah. So um, <laughs> I'm wondering if we're going to get that. I suspect that um, we'll get it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's if I had to put money down, I think that we're going to get a revised diagram. <laughs> but then again, maybe not. But they're gonna they're gonna mistake his dumbest day for his smartest day and they're gonna be like this might be genius <laughs> and just ruin the whole world <laughs> he writes he writes a bunch of numbers down again but this time instead of it being an actual mathematical physics equation or something he's just like zero zero <laughs> zero zero <laughs> what does this mean it must be a new diagram plan <laughs> it um, is like really scary to see that he's like his Kingdom is becoming exponentially big. It's getting so much yeah. bigger so so quickly. And just the fact of, wow, like an, on any day, those kingdoms could be at the will of a moron. <laughs> well, yeah. he does have good laws in place to prevent him from... So, uh, so far. Yeah. So yeah, so far, <laughs> right. Yeah. It's really kind of his inner circle that's kind of keeping him in control. Because I'm sure... If Teravangian really wanted to seize power and just surprise the hell out of anybody, I don't know that, like, the world would really be able to resist that, you know? Yeah. But here's the other thing is, like, we look at the probability uh, section of that chapter, and it's like, you know, I would be willing to think that the genius day is going to happen. But you could also look at it the other way of how would they handle it if they just went through the just almost impossible probability of having, like, consistent bad days for a long period of time and how would they react to that they'd have to say like oh he's sick he's He's sick sick for a year and a half you know yeah Yeah. (laughs) dude um something another thing i want to bring up uh since we're kind of closing this out here is Mm -hmm. what do you think about good old zeth so kaladin basically kills him sticks his shard blade six sill straight into his spine blows his eyes out but our good herald of justice yeah. revives him in time and really likes him because of how adamant Zeth was about following the law. The perfectly. law, yeah. And uh, so it kind of takes him on as a, a new... Um, protege. Yeah. Protege, yeah. And so what I wonder now is, is he going to unleash Zeth on his old accusers? Uh, what about Ooh. good old Taravangian? 
is that coming for him? Like, well, uh, I think we can all agree that these two together seem like a match made in heaven, and it's going to do nothing but good for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, that the character Darkness seems to um, have a very hyper sense of justice, and he seems to have a vendetta um, against yeah. anyone with like those abilities uh, because of sins that they've, you know quote unquote committed in the past. So obviously his ideology is going to leak into Zeth's, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, so expect Zeth to be an extension of this guy's uh, plans mm -hmm. moving forward, yeah. which the question, yeah. doesn't sound thought, like a good thing. Yeah. yeah. I thought that uh, he was one of the people, even though he was a hill, he was one of the people who believed that uh, killing the Vadians would stop the Void Bangers from coming mm -hmm. back. So we I don't believe know that so. we thought that, and we were wondering that, but now I'm starting to wonder if he just has a different vendetta altogether, or a different mm -hmm. goal altogether, because he wouldn't kill them if they hadn't broken a law. Mm -hmm. And that's with his thing of justice. I, I just, I'm not sure yet what this guy's goal is, but the yeah. weird thing that I say is, what if he's corrupt? Because his honor blade was like emitting a dark power right? yeah they described oh, yeah. it as like it wasn't emitting... stormlight it was like yeah, some type of black mist like some kind of black mm -hmm. mist so yeah like what i wonder is is it possible that maybe one of the heralds became corrupt what is going on mm -hmm. i'm not sure so mm. kind of an interesting i think we're gonna oh man this third book's gonna be awesome so maybe <laughs> maybe odium somehow recruited him potentially yeah, maybe <laughs> i don't know man this is uh, this is crazy, man. We've gotten through two books. There's so many answers that we've gotten, and yet there's so, so many questions. questions. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. So. I think that's also interesting, though, because it just opens up the entire possibility of a whole different type of energy. Yeah. I like, mm -hmm. I like that idea, and how does this energy yeah. play in? Is it going to be as simple as Stormlight good, yeah. <laughs> Black Energy bad, or Dude. is it going to be like way more complicated? Yeah. So... Um, with that, I think, uh, we could probably close out discussion. You guys got any last, um, discussion mm. topics? Let's see. I think no. we're ready for the third I'm book. I, I'm um, so ready for the third book. So yeah, I'm, gonna, here. I'm, I'm gonna, so ready for Kaladin and Shalon to finally get together in the third book. Oh, we <laughs> will see. Uh, we will see. So I want to actually. I have one question. I have one question uh -huh. that I want to bring up to everybody and see what you guys feel about it. Because so far, the first book and the second book, we found out the names of the actual books we're reading are based off of books within the book. So the first book, uh, Way, of, Way of, Kings. of Kings, Dalinar's reading it, and then um, Radiance. What is it? Uh, Sorry. Words, Words, of of Words of Radiance. We found Shalon out, and Shalon was reading yeah. it, and I think some other people we through mm -hmm. we found out we're reading it. So the next one, I believe, is Oathbringer, Which correct? is the name of right. Dalinar's sword. Which is the name of sword. Dalinar's old sword, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. That he doesn't have anymore. Although now it's thrown out of a window into the grass. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Up for grabs. So, <laughs> I want to know, do you guys think that he is taking a new direction and starting to like focus on something different? Like, not the books, but maybe the individual blades? Or do you think that we're going to come across a book that is named Oathbringer that possibly Dalinar's blade was named after or something like that. I don't know. I want to hear some speculation from people on that because hmm. I thought it was interesting that I know. it's kind of changing. Yeah. That. yeah, that is that is switching up the system. Mm -hmm. um, well, right alongside that theory, um, I think it, it may depend on who ends up with Oathbringer yeah. uh, since that sword is up for grabs. and That's true. You know, if that person is going to be interested in the lore, uh, whether or not they read, you know, theoretically, <laughs> yeah. the Oathbringer book. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah. I think um, the first two books were about the beginning, like, you know, reading the book, you understanding. Now, for the third one, Oathbringer, is when they, uh, the Radiants start taking the oaths right. to... Uh, become radiant to become radiant and you see more people taking that oath the mm. words mm. and it'll be more about forming the sex or the different uh, divisions mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. do we know for sure that Oathbringer is a blade it's we know that it is Dalinar's blade but that's what he called it 
Right. And then we don't know if it's a book or not. Oh, okay. So we don't know anything. So he called it Oathbringer. Yeah. All right. So we don't know anything else. And <laughs> I, I actually don't have any idea, so I'm excited to find out. Yeah. Before we leave, I'm going to read kind of hilariously through our Brett bets. And see if we have any <laughs> answers to any. <laughs> I'm not going to go into who won or lost them. I think we'll, we'll do that know, on the we'll Facebook page. We'll do it on the page, Facebook yeah. page. Okay. But, um, I did collect, I went back through the notes and through the previous podcast and tried to collect them. Mm-hmm. And, and then going forward, obviously, Andrew is going to be the official, uh, oath keeper, Re- right. uh, <laughs> record of our oath keeping. Uh, so we can, no. we can leave him off in, in the, the hot place to suffer yes. so that we don't have to. <laughs> so, um, real, real quick guys, Shalon's bro, dead or alive. We got the answer to that one. We did. Alive. <laughs> <laughs> Shalon's powers. Are Shalon's powers based on Stormlight? Uh, three people in the lake, lake area. Um, were they heralds? Although we already did that one. Yeah. <laughs> I we, drank for that one already. I, no, you, I you lost, did. I think. Yeah, I don't think we got the answer on that one yet, but you did drink on some. Oh, um, yeah, it wasn't that one. We, although we have to look into that one. There may have yeah. been some hints, but I don't think we have definitively found it. But I want to change my up. answer on that one. We said we could change it all the way up to the third book. Uh, Kaladin has the same lashings as Zeth. We took a bet on that. Oh. Why was the Oath Pact needed in the beginning with the Heralds? The Heralds? Well, let me, let me go back to that one really quick. Do we know the answer to that one? We don't know for sure if they're the Ka- same lashings. Kaladin we? did have the same lashings. Oh, we do know for uh, sure that they're the same. Uh, Zeth had the tough. honor blade that That's right. That's was right. for Kaladin. That's right. Yeah. Um, why was the original oath pack needed for not for the radiance but for the heralds? Oh yeah, we don't know. Uh, Zeth is his binding magical or moral? We got the answer to that. Yeah, definitely moral. Moral. Uh, is time linear or cyclical? That's kind of got a question mark on it, although it's indicating right now that it's linear. Because it seems of the very change. linear. Yeah. yeah. Uh, clear Lake people are heralds or not? Oh, I wrote that one twice. My bad. That was the <laughs> lake one. Uh, does Yasna know about Shalan's past? We got the answer to that. She didn't. Did not. Shalan, did she murder her mom? Question mark. Yep. We found that out. Yep. Uh, by but the way, it's her Manny, mom's fault. Yeah, Manny was pretty uh, peeved at me because he was assuming that I gave that away and I just completely forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's okay. Uh, do the heralds get their power in or outside of hell? We don't know anything about that yet, how yeah. they got their power, so we'll find that out. Will Maybe. Sadius betray Dalinar? Uh, uh, <laughs> I will point out that the captain was like, no, I don't think he will. <laughs> but, uh... Wait, yeah, didn't, uh, Sadius betraying Dalinar? Yeah, that was one of our early, early ones. No, I, I definitely said he was going to take advantage of that. I was definitely on the yes, he will betray inside. We'll have... To, this, so we actually took this when we were first learning about uh, Sadius and Dalinar and how they were, like, playing the game around the cave. Right, yeah. Uh-huh. But, uh, and I think that our... Right. I kind of being opposite of Andrew, like, no, they'll be buddies. Maybe, yeah. maybe I'm wrong. I have to listen to the podcast but, again. Uh, yeah. But we'll Didn't get to it. we find out the answer to this? Um, that the Hills got the powers from... We don't know yet. Almighty. We know, we well, know that... a good indication that they got the swords. We know then, that he gave them the uh, power and the swords, but we don't know what else their powers encompass, and we don't know the true story of where they get it. So right. I think that we could 99.9% say that they were outside of Seems hell. promising, but we well, don't know yet. We don't know the whole why they would go into hell, right. what is hell, so <clears throat> we'll have to figure that out. Um, and uh, Harold Left Behind is the voice in the vision. Um, good try, Brett, but that was not accurate. Damn it. Uh, will Seth <laughs> kill the King of Cabranth? Oh, that man. is still open now. <laughs> <laughs> we were thinking no, but that's still open. Yeah, that wow. is open. Uh, Lopin is a traitor? Question mark. I think I said he was somebody awesome. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I was Andrew, wrong on that one. Big yeah, time. <laughs> I think I think Andrew's happy about being wrong on that one. I yeah. am. Yeah, is I Yesna am. alive or dead? We. Got I actually think one. the Lopin one. I think I actually even said I think he's gonna have powers even. We'll I have believe to, I said well, that. Well, these are things we'll have to listen to in the podcast when we get there as I'm editing it, I'm curious <laughs> yeah. about this. Yeah. So um, we'll have to, we'll go through and confirm all this because maybe uh, Captain's completely right. He might have said Sadius is definitely Yeah, I think he did. Him. Yeah. I think he yeah. did. And, yeah. But 
that, like I said, I, I don't remember all of our answers right. respectively on these, but we will, uh, we will confirm those and we will have those Brett bet penalties up on Facebook uh, at some literature, point. Literature, Facebook, or maybe YouTube as well. So right, yeah, it'll probably be linked everywhere. Uh, okay. And then those were our old ones. So uh, now the captain is in charge of our new ones. Oh, which what we about? Had a few, um, but didn't we take a Brett bet on my theory that uh, Spren were? So were the I blades? didn't have it in my oh. notes, but I highly bet that we did. Yeah, I, think I don't know did. if we did a Brett bet, but I definitely remember talking about we it. We talked about yeah, it. Yeah, I think sure. we did do a Brett bet on that. And uh, when I edit more episodes. We may find that out. Yeah, yeah. we will. We'll get them all alive. I want everybody to drink. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, Josh I, and I were not allowed to partake in that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that'll do. That'll do for today. Sorry yes. for the long awesome. episode, folks. Uh, we went a little over. Uh, we just didn't have enough for two full episodes, so we just have one semi-long one. But yes. thanks again for joining us for uh, lit literature. This was the final episode 12 for the words of radiance and we are now moving officially to book three book three and we're all Brandon on the Sanderson. same page finally yep all of us all nobody of us. knows yeah. what's gonna happen yep so uh <laughs> it's all new we're excited for it and uh hopefully you will be joining us for that without further ado uh cheers cheers gentlemen